Hello and welcome to Riverside Dialysis. My name is Edlin, your registered dietitian. Today we will be discussing fluid management and dialysis. In this video, we will review where water is in our bodies, how it is affected by dialysis, the consequences of too much or too little water in the body, and how fluid removal is determined by your dialysis team. Remember, dialysis works by removing water and waste from your body. The amount of fluid in your body as well as how much and how fast it is removed plays a very important role in your health and how you feel. Our bodies are about two-thirds water. On average, that is about 42 liters, or 11 gallons. That is a lot of water. But this water does not move around freely. The water in our body is in three main spaces and it constantly shifts from one space to another. Let's look at each space and see where the water is. Space 1, or the intracellular space, is the space inside our cells. Cells are our body's building blocks. We can have as many as 37 trillion cells. And each cell contains some water. Of the 42 liters of water in our body, 67%, or about 7 gallons is inside our cells. That is more than half of all the water in our body. Water is always slowly entering and leaving the cell through the cell wall. This is space 1. Now that we have talked about space 1, let's look at space 2. Space 2 is the space in between our cells. It is the fluid our cells float in. Of the total water or 11 gallons, this space holds about 24% or 2 and a half gallons of our body water. Now let's look at the last and final space, space 3. Space 3 holds the remaining 9% or 1 gallon of water in our body. It is the space outside of our cells. Some of this water is in our eyes, lungs, and spine. The remaining water is located in our bloodstream. Water is perfectly balanced between these three spaces. When our kidneys don't work, the balance can't be maintained and extra water builds up. This buildup of water results in shortness of breath and swelling in our hands, feet, or face. Where there is swelling or shortness of breath, this is from water in spaces 1 and 2, not space 3. You may be asking why this is important. Well, dialysis can only reach and remove water that is in the blood, which is in space 3 but the extra water is in spaces 1 and 2. To remove water from spaces 1 and 2, a movement of water in all three spaces must happen. With extra waste and water in your body, you may experience some weight gain. Your normal body weight, without extra fluid, is called your dry weight. There is no perfect machine to determine your dry weight, so your medical team will calculate how much water to remove based on five parameters. First, your nurse will check for swelling in your arms and legs. All the fluid you eat and drink but don't urinate must go somewhere. So it goes to your arms, legs, lungs, and stomach. Next, your nurse will ask if you are having shortness of breath or difficulty breathing when performing daily activities such as walking your dog. Third, your medical team will compare your weights from before and after your last treatments. Fourth, your nurse will listen to your lungs to check for any fluid. And lastly, your nurse will check your blood pressure and heartbeat. Extra water will result in an increased blood pressure. When first starting dialysis, finding your dry weight may take a few treatments. Your doctor will determine your dry weight and this order must be strictly followed by the nurse. While extra water in your body can be dangerous, having too little water is just as dangerous. Removing too much fluid too fast can cause cramping, dizziness, nausea, and a drop in blood pressure either during or after your treatment. Even worse, harsh water removal stuns organs by starving them of oxygen. This can cause permanent damage. These symptoms are dangerous and can result in hospitalization. Your nurse will ask you if you are experiencing any of these symptoms because it can mean too much water is being removed too fast. Removing extra water will not help you lose weight, but rather cause more harm. At the end of your dialysis treatment, when your blood is being returned to you, 
you may see a small amount of saline solution used. This is to ensure every drop of blood is returned to you. It will not add water to your body. It is an essential step to prevent anemia. Once you have completed your dialysis treatment, it is important to try and stay as close to your dry weight as possible. This will limit the amount of stress on your body. To maintain your dry weight, you need to watch the amount of fluid and salt you consume, both during and after treatments. What you drink during your dialysis treatment is not removed during your current treatment. It will contribute to the fluid that will need to be removed during your next visit. Salt is restricted to 2 grams or 2,000 milligrams per day in order to help control fluid, thirst, and swelling. To reduce the amount of salt in your diet, try flavoring with spices and herbs instead of salt. Try to also reduce how often you eat out. These foods are highly processed and contain high amounts of salt. The amount of fluid we intake contributes to swelling and weight change during dialysis treatments. To limit fluid intake, divide your fluid allowance into manageable parts. For example, if you have 32 ounces per day, you can drink 8 ounces at 4 different times throughout the day. Some other tips include using a smaller glass for your drink and taking sips, not big gulps. When you feel thirsty, try chewing on ice cubes or chips or a hard candy. Some candy options include Jolly Ranchers, Lifesavers, or Lollipops. Lastly, watch out for hidden sources of fluid such as popsicles, ice cream, soup, or sherbet. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, we are here to help.